Do you remember the Zodiac? The Hollywood retelling of the Zodiac story hit theaters across the country and introduced moviegoers to Robert Gray Smith's version of the facts. While the media embraced the film and the author enjoyed the celebrity spotlight, another movie about the case premiered in San Francisco. The event drew curious crime buffs and others from all over the country to share their interest in one of the most amazing unsolved mysteries in American history. Tom Voigt, founder of the website ZodiacKiller.com, had organized the meeting and invited several guest speakers, but the featured event was a special screening of a new documentary by filmmaker John Mikulenka titled Hunting the Zodiac. The film studies several amateur sleuths and followed Tom Voigt's efforts to use the internet to gather information and generate new interest in the case. This is an amazing story. Researcher Ed Neal also appeared in the film. This is, after all, where it all started. Voigt's website provided information about the crimes and offered a forum to exchange ideas about theories and suspects. Many visitors of the site also attended Voigt's so-called task force meetings held in the Bay Area. It looks like any 4th of July gathering, but they found each other on the Zodiac website. Tom Voigt of Portland launched the site five years ago. This is not by any means glorifying it. This is not a fan club. This, these are people who are trying to find the guy. They're trying to use uh, the information superhighway to come up with that missing piece. People read about the case and they just get hooked. And it's, uh, it's unlike any other thing in, in uh, the history of crime. One of the most fascinating crimes of the 20th century. The meetings attracted people from all walks of life. The casual and friendly atmosphere made it easy to overlook the unique and historic nature of the gatherings. Graysmith and others may have believed that they had solved the case, but the rest of the world was still hunting for the Zodiac, and modern technology had mobilized citizens in the search for one of America's most elusive killers. Yet the media often focused on the more colorful characters who were convinced they had cracked the case and identified the Zodiac. I'm left-handed, too. Do you still have That's more copies of your book? Sign this Others had more personal reasons for attending the meetings such as Leo, the brother of Zodiac victim Darlene Farron, and retired detective Bill Baker. In the early 1970s, Baker investigated the brutal murders of two teenagers along an isolated stretch of beach near Santa Barbara, California. Despite Baker's efforts, the murders remained unsolved. The retired detective noted similarities between his unsolved case and the Zodiac's attack on a young couple at Lake Berryessa in 1969. He suspected that the hooded Zodiac killer may have been responsible for both crimes. Retired detective Ken Narlow investigated the attack at Lake Berryessa and, like Baker, still hoped to identify the Zodiac and close the case. In June 2003, Tom Voigt arranged for Baker and Narlo to meet for the first time. The men discussed their cases, compared notes, and considered the chilling possibility that the Zodiac's crime spree had started years earlier than anyone had suspected. Baker shared his thoughts on the mind of the Zodiac. He was into to nighttime glitz attacks, and for him to do it in daytime when he could be seen, he had to hide behind him. But what you were saying about, about the hood, though, that he 
you know, did he wear it for something that he got out of it, right. or, or did he did he wear it because he enjoyed the fear that it instilled in the that's, that's, another that's, yeah. that's, that's, that's another element. That's much more frightening than a ski mask. That's another element. What meaning it had in his mind. But again, it, most serial killers are terrorists to a certain extent, and the fact that with his, his letters and whatnot, they're trying to instill terror in people. Right, I'm sure he got off in a certain amount of fear as well. Bill Baker was a featured speaker at the San Francisco event in 2007, and while his description of the 1963 murders shocked the audience, retired police dispatcher Nancy Slover had everyone on the edge of their seats when she recalled her telephone conversation with the Zodiac. After he shot two people in a Vallejo park, the killer called local police to report the crime in a monotone and taunting voice. He was mocking me, is what he was doing. He was playing with me. And he did it for shock that, and it worked. You know, it worked. Donald Harden and his wife had solved one of the Zodiac's coded messages, and his daughter Leslie also attended the event, along with others involved in the case. John Mikulenka addressed the audience before the screening of his film, Hunting the Zodiac, and shared his thoughts about the citizens dedicated to the search for the killer. When the media finds out what my project is about, they kind of shorthand it a little bit, and then they'll kind of imply, that's the crazies, or that's the obsessives, or some other kind of diminishment of, of what you guys do. While the media was always eager to portray amateurs as kooks and crackpots, television and film producers also depended on the community of crime buffs to help produce the many documentary shows about the unsolved crimes. Acting as consultants and technical advisors, the amateur investigators provide information, documents, photos, and even guide television crews to the crime scenes. Right, but if you could guide him uh -huh. so, so that he knows that he's shooting the right stuff. Okay. Those devoted to generating interest in the unsolved case are aware that they often do so at their own expense when dealing with the media. Experience had taught those involved in the production that the show would most likely portray them as kooks. But they also knew that such programs were only produced because the efforts of the amateur community had put the aging mystery back in the spotlight. I also want to ask the media, how is that any different than flying in trees by helicopter to Lake Berryessa so you can recreate the, uh, the scene of the uh, knife attack in 1969? I mean, it's, it's really interesting to me to hear uh, David Fincher and Robert Graysmith celebrated as auteurs and, uh, and very, very accomplished professionals when the only real difference between what they do and what you guys do is collect the paycheck at the end. So, anyway, in that spirit, that's, that's